You've got to be uncomfortable being comfortable. Let's do it on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to another edition of the Locked On UCLA podcast. I'm your host, Zach Anderson. Yox, I'm rolling solo today. Thanks for making this your first listen each and every day. It's free where we get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever. Like, comment, and download over there. And thanks for watching on YouTube. Comment, subscribe, everything in between. Thanks for all your support. Become an everyday listener of the Locked On UCLA podcast because, hey, it's awesomeness. This is greatness. Where we're going to start today with Locked On UCLA is somewhat breaking news. A little bit before this episode, it's been rumored and teased in terms of rule changes coming to college football. And while there was a crazy dramatic possibility that the NCAA may adopt running the clock in between incomplete passes, this was rumored maybe early March, there was this indication that the rule changes would include the clock not stopping after first downs and only stopping after first downs in the final two minutes of each half. Well, after a CBS Sports report by Dennis Dodd, I saw just before getting things kind of finalized for this show, the clock stoppage would be the biggest thing that's differentiated college football from the NFL since 1968. So first downs, they're not going to stop the clock. So what does that mean for UCLA moving forward? One of the more dynamic teams, Chip Kelly emphasizes So much on speed, quickness, learning plays, going quick, 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 nine-minute sessions, and you play and have 24 plays done in a spring practice in the middle of April. And that's not even in the thick of things in fall camp, which we'll talk about in in a few minutes. This is going to possibly change college football. One, in terms of the viewing, how long games are. They've sometimes stretched from well beyond three hours to three and a half, almost four hours in crazy high-scoring affairs. But for UCLA, a team that had almost pride themselves on running the clock, excuse me, running the ball like they did last year a lot. How do you tailor your offense to being up-tempo, quick, moving the ball, you stop the clock every time you get a first down, and does that actually affect what UCLA is going to do going forward, considering everything's just going to keep running? From all the indications, it doesn't look like the incomplete pass running the clock rule will be implemented But it seems like a matter of time, according to the CBS Sports report, that the NCAA will officially approve this new rule coming up in the new season. So, And this will be adopted coming up pretty soon based on what I've been reading. Initially, the way the game might be slowly pushed down is the fact that the reduction of plays will come down to nearly seven plays per game. And for UCLA, all they want to do is get plays in, get plays in, get plays in, and run up tempo offense, and we can see how explosive they've been over recent years, especially last year in 2022 and for a large portion of 2021. So those are that's one of the big rules that could be very interesting coming up in college football and the, the playing committee. It's the prop, quote-unquote, that's what it's called. And if they change these rules, one just wonders how Chip Kelly will adapt. Is it still up tempo? Do you slow things down and run the football? Or if UCLA just keeps going and plays the regular style, if that affects anything. So I just thought that was an interesting thing to really start the show off with about, hey, you know, this is an interesting wrinkle in college football. We've been used to the clock being stopped these long days of tailgating, right? You go to the game, you spend three, four hours before tailgating, depending on the venue. You spend three to four hours in the stadium, depending on how early you get in the stadium and enjoying a long college football game. We just love those long, epic games. And then you go even tailgate after or go celebrate after, depending on what you do. So this could kind of change not only just the game-playing experience, obviously, but the fan experience, the whole viewing experience in terms of trying to shorten these games into windows that fit more like three hours, closer to NFL game times in terms of trying to get that three-hour window as opposed to just let's play all day long Like we had that crazy LSU-Texas A&M 7 overtime game a few years ago. Now they've changed the overtime rules. So they're just trying to lessen the impact, shorten these games. And one just wonders, you know, again, I bring up this point. 
How will this actually affect UCLA's offense in the future? All these up-tempo spread. Let's get the ball out quick. We're getting as many plays in. Is that going to help those teams that try to get as many plays in and move the ball with the clock continually continually rolling until the two-minute mark of the first half and the end of the second half where you stop the clock with first downs? Or is it something that's not really going to make a difference? I think it will. I just wonder who is it going to favor, the teams that are a little more slow-tempo, that value possession, or is it the teams that let's go, 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 and you get more chances, more possession, just like you're seeing in different sports, valuing possessions, up-tempo, let's move quick, baseball, basketball, all these sports trying to move quick, and now here football is somewhat trying to do the same thing by just keeping the clock rolling. So I just wonder how those will actually play out. Funny enough, that quote I mentioned to start the show, we're trying to be uncomfortable being comfortable. It doesn't actually apply necessarily to this new rule, but it could be interesting. It's what Kenny Churchwell said about what UCLA defense, the UCLA's defense is trying to do under Danton Lynn. He had some media availability after the most recent spring practice on Thursday. So let's talk about his comments and what UCLA is trying to implement defensively moving forward here in Locked On UCLA. But first, let's tell you about Locked On's got this mock NFL draft. They've got all these great alignment. They've got all the great hosts from Locked On College, and they've just told everybody, hey, this individual players, you should go check out the Locked On NFL mock draft. They've got everything, great coverage on the upcoming NFL draft. And also, you should check out Built Bar, because something exciting is coming to Built.com tomorrow, April 22nd. They're going to drop something we don't even have the details yet. The excitement's real. You're not going to want to miss it. And if you know how Built works, it's just the most incredible protein bar in the world. And they've got these amazing flavor drops with unreal flavors in limited quantity. Saturday, April 22nd, you're going to want to be the one the first to discover what all the hype is about. Can't wait to see what the new flavor is. All you have to do is go use the promo code Locked On 15. That's Locked On 15. Locked On 15, and you'll get 15 percent off of your order. Cruising on into segment two of Locked On UCLA, I'm going to talk about what Danton Lynn was discussing during his most re- recent media availability. I believe it's one of his first post-practice media availabilities. Of course, the son of Anthony Lynn, the new UCLA defensive coordinator coming over from working in the secondary with the Baltimore Ravens as UCLA tries to bring that little mix of NFL expertise, the Big Ten, because he you know dealt with Big Ten coaching for a while, and then someone who has no defensive coordinating experience, bringing all this youthful, different type of flavor into what UCLA's defense needed, which was probably a youth infusion or some sort of overhaul coming in to this next season in 2023. And one of the biggest things he was talking about with Kenny Churchwell, who was one of the players interviewed, needing different, you know, playing different positions, moving back to safety. A lot of what he was talking about is versatility. He wants a lot of versatility in the defensive backs, but he wants your DNs, the rushers, everybody for UCLA, linebackers. Some guys might come play nickel. They might go rush the next play. He was talking a lot about UCLA wants to be more dynamic. Dynamic is more my word, but versatility is something he wants this Bruins defense to have and have guys be able to do different spots, which is where that quote from Kenny Churchwell comes in. We're trying to be uncomfortable being comfortable. It's a unique flavor. And one of the biggest things, Danton Lynn, he's not trying to do too many crazy things. He used to, as some would say, a Chip Kelly-ism in terms of the baby in the bathwater and kind of throwing that out there in his post-media quote availability, saying he's not going to try and throw too many crazy different things as they try to transition from last year's defense into this year with as a guy with no defensive coordinating experience. He's trying to bring all these ideas together, and he wants you know the defense to be complementary. He was talking about how the Bruins, they played a certain defense, and it came to how last year they ran more of a pattern match coverage. A zone principle, you know, could be tracking receivers in a certain defender's area. This year, he wants to do more spot drops as opposed to just what they were doing last year. You want to ignore those specific routes and break more on the ball. It's more of a looser zone as opposed to being so tight. And that's what led to big plays in recent years in his mind. He's emphasizing so far in this practice, UCLA, which we all saw. We all know this coming into this upcoming season. You can't give up big plays. And we want to disguise our coverages better. So that idea of maybe we're not trying to go too crazy, but they're trying to mix and match 
different things. And even one of UCLA's players was quoted as saying, there's an area we've lacked in the past. We're trying to have more of a looser zone, harp on the vision, and make sure everybody's on the same page. And it just seemed like there's plenty of opportunities. I could give you numbers. I could tell you anything. But the eye test last year could tell you how many times the Bruin defense just left gaping holes in the coverage or wide open running room for quarterbacks to weave up and down in the pocket and break or everything in between. Oregon, Arizona, USC, that last drive versus Pitt, those all come up in horrific recent memory as times when UCLA was just clearly not on the same page defensively. And one of the biggest things UCLA is trying to fix is the red zone defense. They're one of the worst teams, the bottom 25 in all of the FBS and the NCAA of red zone scores surrender. Opposing offenses were only stopped 11.5% of the time when they got inside the Bruins' 20-yard line. So there's a lot of mix and match in the modern coverage world that Danton Lynn was trying to explain to everybody in the media, and even reading this LA Times article, which kind of explains things. He's trying to have a mix of pattern match, spot drop, and man-to-man defenses that you know just kind of disguises what they're trying to do a bit better, be on the same page, have guys like Femi Oladejo, who is highly complimentary of, do his job. These guys are speaking of, we got to do our own job, and that's going to let guys get coverage sacks, right? They were They had some good coverage sacks last year, but the consistency of it just simply wasn't there for UCLA, especially in the red zone, finding ways to make turnovers happen. They did, did not always do that. It was trying to be this bend but don't break defense, and they're trying to implement new things going into this next season. And they're trying to overhaul the secondary, a versatile secondary. That's a key thing he's trying to implement. Some guy, One guy might go play safety. He might go back and play be a nickel. He might go play as a corner. These are all different things Danton Lynn is trying to implement. And some of the UCLA players are saying they're trying to make this defensive meeting room like an NFL room, the expertise from the NFL, while also transitioning the terminology, the concepts into the college game. Because Danton Lid says, hey, it's a little different. You're looking at the wider hashes. I came as soon as I went back and forth between choosing between going back to Baltimore or coming to Southern California. And I got here. I loved it. And he went back and watched all this game tape from 2022. And saw how the different things that broke down for UCLA's defense really hurt UCLA's chances to get deep into that season. So the big thing is learning how to apply what he's learned in the NFL, really retool the secondary, and kind of gives UCLA a very new look. Without necessarily changing so much conceptually, there's still going to be a lot different types of, there's going to be a little different in terms of look for UCLA. They're not going to do too much craziness. They're tweaking little by little, and we'll just see how the Bruins look like in the upcoming 2023 season. And, you know, Danton Lynn's not trying to give too much away in media interviews. He's not going to be like this, 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 and be super, you know, vocal about what he's trying to do. But he's obviously making tweaks, and he knows what some issues were. And he's just trying to understand the transition from the the NFL back to the college game and understanding, hey, what is going to work for UCLA? That's enough riffraff about UCLA football because spring practice is more than halfway over for the Bruins. So there's only so much that he can do in terms of implementing new systems, getting guys in, and then you got to go through the summer camp and the fall camp and prove yourselves yet again when it's time to get ready for UCLA football in the fall in early September against Coastal Carolina. We're going to cruise on to Locked On UCLA's third segment and talk about, hey, UCLA baseball has some crucial weekends coming up in these next couple of weeks because they've got first and foremost, they've got USC coming to town. They have a big, or actually, yes, I shouldn't say coming to town. They are going to USC. They're going to Dado Field. And for the Bruins, these are two weekends where, despite their struggles these last few weeks, a lot of the rankings, even within the last couple of weeks, have had John Savage's team as something that could maybe be a host in the opening round, in the regional round of the NCAA tournament. And if you get ranked high enough, dare I say, potentially in line to host a super regional. The Bruins haven't been that consistent nor that good in my perspective in terms of getting that type of respect. But coming into the weekend, they're amongst the top half, the upper third of Pac-12 play. They're behind the likes of an Arizona State 
who's been on a surge for the likes of the last few weeks, despite a slow start. They're just behind Stanford, but with UCLA having a canceled game and a tie in their record, they are three wins behind both Stanford and Arizona State in the Pac-12 standings as they try to jump up. They're just ahead of Oregon. They're just ahead of USC. UCLA's 8-5-1 and one in Pac-12 play, while also being about 21-11 in one. So they got to play USC, who's on the verge of just behind them, surpassing them in the standings. And then they've got to play Stanford. And those are back to back road series for the Bruins. This is moving time for UCLA. Of course, you got all the emotions, which should be good weather, warmer weather, I should admit, but good weather. And how can UCLA respond after only taking two out of three against Davis, struggling a little bit in these midweeks recently? They just haven't been a solid ball club. Kyle Caro's finally returned from an ankle injury. They're still looking for Jake Brooks to be that guy that was a true dominant force earlier in his UCLA career, despite getting the Friday night start. They're looking for more consistency in the rotation, and more consistent swings from their top bats in the lineup. And when your best pitcher and your best player are either not producing or hurt now the lineup, that's really going to hurt what you're trying to do in the upcoming season. But still, hey, this is the middle near end of April. You've got another month plus to surge forward and turn yourselves into a true title contender. Hey, the last few years, it hasn't always been the team you expected to win. It's been a couple of Mississippi schools that went on big runs and came out of nowhere. Of course, SEC, yada, yada, yada. But they came out of nowhere and ended up winning the title, winning the championship, all these things that they earned in late runs. So it could be a late run by UCLA, just got to tighten up the ship, play better defense. You know, earlier in the year, they were one of the best teams in the country fairly early when it came to ERA. It's not necessarily the case at the moment, but here UCLA is coming off a 12 to four loss to UC Irvine, another team in SoCal that's been scuffling. And if you lose back-to-back series in these next couple of Pac-12 weekends, they could fall from competing for first or second all the way to the sixth or even seventh spot with Oregon State with 10 wins. They've got more wins than UCLA does in Pac-12 play, and yet they're sitting there in sixth place with 10 wins in Pac-12 play. There's only two teams that have more wins than Oregon State in Pac-12 baseball play, and yet they're sitting in the middle of the pack because of all the games and all the losses they've had. UCLA still has to play ASU, Stanford, and USC. Those are all teams that are just around UCLA in the standings. If they really want a chance to win the Pac-12, potentially solidify themselves, As a regional host, you got to go on a big surge here. This is a chance where they've missed against Utah and Washington State, and its sweep, the lack of a sweep against Davis, have really put a damper into the UCLA resume. And now they just got to find a way to get better. Again, USC, UCLA, they already played once. The Bruins beat them in the SoCal Baseball Challenge at Jackie Robinson, a non conference series earlier this year, I believe in March, mid March, early March. But this is different. It's Pac-12 play. The Trojans have gone up and down. They've got one of the best players at hitting triples this year in Austin Overn. They've got just about everything that can click their way. This is a much better Trojan team than in years past, especially this year compared to last year. They've got a much better vibe about them. So the Bruins must be ready, and the Cardinal are looming in the next weekend. I can't emphasize this enough. These are big weekends. We'll recap it come next week. Talk more basketball news and more football news and everything in between for Locked On UCLA. In the meantime, UCLA fans, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for making this your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcast. Locked On UCLA podcast. Download it. Get it on your audio platforms. Subscribe and download on YouTube. Comment. Thanks for your support. In the meantime, UCLA fans, become an everyday listener. If you become an everydayer, you're going to hear all the topics. Monday, we're going to get to the big news on Monday morning. We don't even know what that might be yet. We're still waiting. But if there's big recruiting news or if someone decides to drop out of the NBA draft for some reason this early before all the combine workouts, we've got it all. Transfer portal news. It's been a little quiet. A day Mara. It seems like he might be a Bruin any day now. We're going to talk about all those things coming up on Locked On UCLA. Hands up, Bruins fans. Eight clap time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.